class 11th chemistry we were discussing unit 2 structure of atom and in this video we will discuss about dual behavior of electromagnetic radiation numerical based on photoelectric effect and Planck's equation and emission and absorption spectra first come to the dual behavior of electromagnetic radiation in the previous videos we have discussed that black body radiation and photoelectric effect can be explained on the basis of particle nature of electromagnetic radiation or light which was given by the Planck and interference and diffraction can be explained on the wave nature of electromagnetic radiation which was given by the Maxwell that's why we can say that light possesses both particle and wave like properties that is light has dual behavior whenever radiation interacts with matter it displays particle like properties and when radiation propagates it exhibits wave like properties e is equal to h nu this is Planck's equation E is equal to mc square this is the einstein equation which correlate energy and mass and this c is equal to nu lambda and from this we can find out nu is equal to c by lambda in this relation if we replace this nu by c by lambda then we will get h c by lambda which is equal to e and this e is also equal to this mc square that's why E is equal to hc by lambda is equal to mc square and if we rearrange and simplify this relation then we will get lambda is equal to h by mc where this mc mass multiplied by velocity this is momentum lambda is equal to h by p where p is the momentum and this is the characteristic of particle and lambda is the characteristic of wave okay that's why we can say this relationship correlate particle nature and wave nature of the photon or radiation problem 2.6 calculate energy of one mole of photons of radiation whose frequency is 5 into 10 to the power 14 hertz energy for this formula is e is equal to h nu where h is the Planck constant 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second this new frequency is given put the value in this and if we solve it we will get this 3.313 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule this is the energy of one photon and we can find out energy of one mole photon by multiplying this energy with Avogadro constant 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 mole if we solve it we will get this into the joule and we can convert into the kilojoule that is 199.51 kilojoule per mole problem 2.7 a 100 watt bulb emits monochromatic light of wavelength 400 nanometer calculate the number of photons emitted per second by the bulb power is given in watt and as we know 1 watt is equal to 1 joule per second that's why 100 watt is equal to 100 joule per second energy of one photon can be can be calculated by this Planck equation in this case nu is equal to c by lambda because in this question wavelength is given frequency is not given put the value h is Planck constant c is the speed of light lambda is 400 nanometer we have converted into the meter si unit by multiplying 10 to the power minus 9 then e is equal to hc by lambda this is the value of h this is the value of c and this is the value of lambda and if we solve it we will get this 0 0.04969 into 10 to the power minus 17 if we express into the scientific notation then this decimal we have to shift to place right side okay and when this is shift to the place of right side this power is decreases by 2 that's why this will go to minus 19 okay this is the energy now we have to find out the number of photons emitted this is power divided by energy of one photon okay this you will not be here put the value this power is given 100 joule per second and this energy of one photon we have calculated and solve it we will get this one okay now again in this case this decimal we have to shift one place of left hand side 
that's why this power is increases by 1 and we will get 2.012 into 10 to the power 20 per second when electromagnetic radiation of wavelength 300 nanometer falls on the surface of sodium electrons are emitted with the kinetic energy of 1.68 into 10 to the power 5 joule per mole what is the minimum energy needed to remove an electron from sodium what is the maximum wavelength that will cause a photoelectron to be emitted First, we will find out the energy of a 300 nanometer photon by using this E is equal to Hc by lambda. H is Planck constant, C is speed of light, lambda is the 300 nanometer. Convert this into the meter and put the value. Then we will get this one. 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule. This is the energy of one photon. Now we will find out energy of one mole of photon by multiplying this energy with Avogadro constant and then we will get this 3.99 into 10 to the power 5. This is the energy of one mole of photon. Then as we know from explanation of photoelectric effect by the Einstein h nu is equal to h nu 0 plus half mv square which where this h nu is the energy of one mole of photon which is we have calculated and in this case this is the kinetic energy and this is given in the question 1.68 into 10 to the power 5 joule per mole and this is the minimum energy needed to remove one mole of electron and this we have to find out so from this we can say we have to find out this one that's why this h nu minus half mv square and h nu is this and kinetic energy is this one and this is the energy minimum energy needed to remove one mole of electron but we have to find out minimum energy for one electron that's why this energy is a divide by Avogadro constant and we will get this one 3.84 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule and corresponding wavelength okay by using this formula lambda this is e is equal to hc by lambda we can find out the lambda put the value this is h this is c and this e we have calculated and this will come 5.17 into 10 to the power minus 7 meter if we convert into the nanometer this will come 517 nanometer Problem 2.9. Threshold frequency that is new 0 or new naught for a metal is given. 7.0 into 10 to the power 14 per second. Calculate the kinetic energy of an electron emitted when radiation of frequency new 1.0 into 10 to the power 15 per second hits the metal. Again, according to the Einstein equation, we can say half mv square is equal to h nu minus h nu 0. If h is the common, we will get this one. Then kinetic energy, put the value, h is Planck constant and this nu is given 1.0 into 10 to the power 15 joule per second and this nu 0, this is also given in the question. And if you solve it, again see this term. Okay, this is 10 to the power 15 and this is 10 to the power 14. We have to make the power same. Okay, that's why this is converted into the 10 to the power 14. Power is decreased by 1. That's why this will become 10. Now, power is the same. Okay, that's why we can solve it. This is 10 minus 7, that is 3 into this is the common 10 to the power 14 per second. And if we multiply these, then we will get this one okay in 1.988 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule now next one is the visible spectrum when a ray of white light is passed through a prism white light is spread out into a series of colored bands and that is called visible spectrum i think in the lower class age you have discussed about this dispersion of light this is the glass prism when white light falls on it, this will split into these seven colors which are visible to us. That's why this is known as the visible spectrum. And you can remember these colors with your, okay, all eight, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. The wave with shorter wavelength, 
bends more than the one with the longer wavelength. Now in this, the light of a red color which has longest wavelength is deviated the least. You can say this, this is the red color. This is from this to this. This deviation is least. Okay. While the violet light which has the shortest wavelength is deviated the most. Now this is deviated large from that. The spectrum of white light that we can see ranges from violet at 7.50 into 10 to the power 14 hertz to red at 4.00 into 10 to the power 14 hertz. Such a spectrum is called continuous spectrum. Why this is continuous? Because violet merges into indigo, indigo into blue, blue into green and so on. We can't separate or we can't draw a line that this color is finished at this and new color is started. Okay. And this is also similar to produced when rainbow forms in a sky. This is rainbow. Okay, we can say these colors are continuous. These are merges into each other. That's why this is called continuous spectrum. Atomic spectra. First two words are there. Spectrum, this is a singular and spectra means plural. The range of characteristic frequencies of electromagnetic radiation that are readily absorbed by readily absorbed by an atom absorbed or emitted by an atom first come to the emission spectrum the spectrum of radiation emitted by a substance that has absorbed energy is called an emission spectrum okay first energy is absorbed then that energy is emitted the spectrum obtained from this emitted energy is known as emission spectrum when electromagnetic radiation interacts with matter Atoms and molecules may absorb energy and reach to a higher energy state. With higher energy, these are in an unstable state. That's why for returning to their normal, that is more stable, lower energy states, the atoms and molecules emit radiations in various regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. The spectrum of these emitted radiation is called emission spectrum. Atoms, molecules or ions that have absorbed radiation are said to be excited. To produce an emission spectrum, energy is supplied to a sample by heating it or by irradiating it and the wavelength or frequency of the radiation emitted is recorded. Absorption spectrum. A spectrum of electromagnetic radiation transmitted through a substance clear this spectrum is obtained from the transmitted light showing dark lines or bands due to absorption at a specific wavelength is known as absorption spectrum actually this absorption spectrum is like the photographic negative of an emission spectrum i think you are familiar with this negative of the photograph okay if we compare the negative of photograph with the positive of photograph, whatever the white shown in the negative, that is actually black. Okay, that's why they are complementary to each other. Absorption spectrum is the missing wavelength which corresponds to the radiation absorbed by the matter leave dark species in the bright continuum spectrum. Now you can compare these two diagrams. This first one represents the emission spectrum and the second one represent the absorption spectrum in this case we have to excite the sample we have to supply the heat okay then this excited sample or then atoms and molecules which are excited to the higher energy state come to the lower energy state they emit the radiation these radiations are passed through the silt and then these radiations through prism then they will give the spectrum Okay, now in this spectrum, these are the some bright lines. Okay, bright lines are there. In case of absorption spectrum, when this white light source is passed through the sample. Okay, now in this case, we are not excited the sample. This sample is at the normal temperature. Okay, then it absorbs the some light and remaining light is transmitted. And then if we transmitted light is passed through the prism, we get the again sample. Uh, we get again the spectrum. Then if we analyze this spectrum, now again compare these two. 
in this case where bright lines are there in this case we are getting the dark lines okay and where this is colored this is dark in this case this is dark and this is colored that's why these are complementary to each other and they are related as a photographic negative and positive spectroscopy the study of emission or absorption spectra is referred to as spectroscopy line spectra the emission or absorption spectra of atoms in the gas phase do not show a continuous spread of wavelength rather they emit light only at specific wavelengths with dark spaces between them such spectra are called the line spectra or atomic spectra because the emitted radiation is identified by the appearance of bright or dark lines in the spectra okay again you can compare if we get the spectrum that is rainbow this is a continuous spectrum okay this is hot gas passed through the prism we will get that emission spectrum but if this is light is passed through the cold gas then whatever the spectrum we will obtain this is absorption spectrum and in these two spectrum lines are there clear in this case bright lines are there and in this case dark lines are there that's why these are known as the line spectra and these are the characteristics of atoms and molecules importance of line emission spectra line emission spectra are of great interest in the study of electronic structure each element has a unique line emission spectrum the characteristics lines in atomic spectra can be used in chemical analysis to identify unknown atoms in the same way as fingerprints are used to identify people we can say like fingerprints are the characteristics of individual people in the same way these line spectrums are the characteristics of individual element or atom german chemist robert bunsen was one of the first investigators to use line spectra to identify elements elements like rubidium cesium thallium indium gallium and scandium were discovered when their minerals were analyzed by spectroscopic methods the element helium was discovered in the sun by spectroscopic method so this is about emission and absorption spectra and importance of line emission spectra thank you